When did a feeling of, we need to get out of here immediately, save you? My mom's bad feeling might have saved me as an infant. She was walking with me in a stroller, down her suburban neighborhood street. She says she started to feel a tingling feeling like she was being watched, so she decided to turn around and head back home. A few streets later she noticed a car driving slowly behind her, the driver, a man, starting at her and me. She starts walking a bit faster and notices he drives a bit faster to keep up, so she gets really scared. Before she can start running, this is the 90s and she didn't have a cell phone, he rolls down the window and tells her not to run or stop, because she's being stalked by a coyote. He saw her safely to our doorstep and then pointed out the coyote, who had followed us half a mile and looked rangy and desperate. It had been slipping from brush to brush looking for an opening. So glad for her intuition and the stranger's help. My dad is a truck driver and has always told me if you are on the interstate near a semi and smell burnt rubber get away from them because they are about to blow a tire. One day driving to work I smell burnt rubber. There was a semi next to me so I sped up to get ahead of him. Next thing I know I see a huge crash in my rear view with one car going airborne and flipping. I called the accident into 911 and then watched the news and papers the rest of the day. Thankfully no fatalities but it was nasty. The semi blew a tire and the car next to it in the middle lane swerved to avoid the tire fragment and hit the car in the far lane causing it to flip. I would have been right in the middle of it all. What just seemed like a bad storm had started, my ex then decided to play with the dog out in the backyard in the rain. I got a weird feeling about how strong the winds were and despite being called crazy I told my ex she and the dog needed to go down into the basement for shelter with me. Within 15 minutes half my roof was gone. Apparently the storm was a derecho, which I'd not even heard of before that. We were hiking and geocaching up in northern Michigan, where it's pretty rednecky in spots. We were at a designated trail with a small parking lot off on some weird side road, but we decided to check it out anyway. About 5 minutes into the trail we noticed a game camera, but there was no ID on it, game cameras on public land need to have ID info, and we thought that was really strange. We kept walking a bit, but I just didn't feel right about the camera or walking on this trail, so we turned around and went back to the truck instead of walking the last mile of the trail. When we got back to the truck, this beater pulls up with a couple in it, the guy was just a regular redneck but the girl in his passenger seat 100% had the nods and was struggling to keep her head up. He looked surprised when we walked out of the trail and they sat in the lot for a second and then left. Pretty sure they weren't looking to go for a hike. My guess is that was their camera and they get the notifications when people are on the trail so they can break into their cars. It happened to us on a family trip in Kentucky years ago so maybe I'm just a little suspicious, but we decided no more backwoods hidden nature trails for us. Not a, get out of here, but a, can't leave this like this. Moment. My GF and I had just picked up a bunch of metal fence posts and stacked them in the back of her car. As we neared being done I had a flash of panic realizing that the points were aimed right at us if we got in an accident. So I turned the whole pile to be cock-eyed so it wouldn't be dead on. On the way home we hit construction. We stopped at the giant flashing traffic light, the guy behind us didn't. We got rear-ended by an SUV doing 60 plus. I instantly had that same flash of panic and looked over at my GF. She was fine, I looked down, I'm fine. Look in the back, the fence posts are firmly wedged into the sides of the car after being slammed forward by the rear end crumpling took my friend out for a drink, first time she had been out since having her daughter 12 weeks earlier, had a round then I went to the restroom, came back to find her having shots at a table with this random dude. Random dude looked at me and I felt flayed alive, nothing in his eyes but malice. I grabbed my friend's hand, said loudly, we are leaving, now. We left immediately, I went back the next day to pay the tab we walked out on and the bartender told me that same man was arrested for attacking a woman outside of the bar. Greyhound left me in Santa Ana at 3am told me to wait 4 hours alone for the next bus. Normally I'm very selective on when I call Ubers but for some reason, something told me I needed to leave right away. I find out my hotel is only about 15 minutes away, wow a 4 hour wait. So I call an Uber. 
Uber driver picks me up. I get in the car tell him something along the lines of, man they wanted me to wait 4 hours and the station is closed WTF. He says he's glad I called him instead of waiting for the next bus. I ask why he says it's a dangerous area and a few weeks ago another girl decided to wait for the next bus and they raped and robbed her. Nobody found her until the station opened up again the next day. Now I always travel with pepper spray. Decided to have a look at a culvert, covered stream, that I hadn't been down before. We weren't expecting it to be much, so no safety call out, weather check, or even bother to let anyone know where the entrances get about 750 meters in, and my buddy notices a load of water pouring in up ahead. We look at each other and go, we need to get out, now. In under 5 minutes, the water went from ankle deep and manageable to knee deep and almost pushing us over. We reached a section with some steps, a ladder, and a handrail for inspection, and managed to push the lid off with the water getting deeper every minute. If that ladder had been 10 meters further, we might not have made it. If we'd have slipped, dead. When we got out, it was raining gently. We were soaking wet, and just looked at each other with that, oh fuck, look a bit more above ground exploring, and we worked out that the culvert went under a local canal. If we'd have slipped, we'd have ended up in a sump under a canal, and likely never made it out. Nobody knew where we were, what was happening, or how to find us. In all likelihood, the only time they'd know where we died is when our corpses got spat out into the nearby river. A combination of stupidity and stupid good luck, I guess. When I was 17, I used to go jogging early in the mornings. My then BF lived about 7 blocks down the road, so I'd jog to his house, then we'd loop around a park together before heading back to our respective homes. I started noticing a guy sitting in his car in the park, watching us run. After a week of this, I'd see the same guy along my jogging route, close to my house, in addition to him being at the park. He'd sit in his car and watch me run, drive to the park, then watch me some more. My BF thought I was being paranoid about it all. And hash X200B. One morning, it was really, really foggy out. I started to cross the street and as I was almost across, someone turned their headlights on bright and it blinded me. Instead of going forward, I stopped and started walked backwards, towards my house. As my eyes adjusted, I could see that the man who'd been watching me was standing next to his car, with the trunk popped open. I noped out of there and went home. I never jogged there again. I reported it to the police my BF's stepdad insisted, but they didn't seem to care. And hash X200B, two years later, a 16-year-old girl was kidnapped, stuffed into a trunk, then driven out to the countryside. She was beaten, raped, and left there naked. By the description of the man and the car, I knew it was done by the same guy who watched me jog. They never caught him. I was walking home from sixth form one day and saw a car following me along the street, I was about 17 edit, misremembered my age. Got a really bad feeling so I hopped on the next bus with the plan to change directions and head home at the bus depot down the road. On the bus, I got a text from a guy who'd stalked me for years on and off, with a picture of my school taken just then and the names and addresses of two of my friends. I freaked. Finally told my parents what was happening, reported it to the police, he'd driven over a hundred miles to try and grab me and my friend and had just missed us cause I hopped on the bus and she had gone home early. He got two and a half years in prison suspended with orders not to contact any of the girls involved, immediately broke that order and got another five years on top. I'm really glad I got that bus. I made a somewhat late night trip to a convenience store that I knew carried wine. I used to work really odd hours and sometimes late at night I'd finish my work and want to have a few drinks. As I was getting back in my truck this young girl asked if I could give her a ride a few blocks back to her home. It was probably a bad idea to judge a book by its cover but she was pretty young, and dressed decently, didn't act too weird or anything so I figured okay. Well I'm heading back and we get into a pretty rough part of town and she says turn left up here. Very dark street. Whatever. I stop and she says she really appreciated the ride, and wanted to do something for me. Asked if she could give me a BJ. I decline and start getting sketched out. Like, she needs to get out now. 
She gets out and closes the door and as I drive away two men dressed in dark clothing were just stepping towards the street and stared at me as I drove past. Pretty sure that would have ended with a gun in my face. That's what you get for being nice sometimes.